Shalom. My name is Daniel, and I have a few ideas about what is yet to come. And if we listen to what the Spirit is saying, we have to understand, first off, there is no good man. There has never been no good man, no good person. Uh, Romans 3.10, no, not even one. And we have to understand that our hearts are desperately wicked. I'm a believer. And I'm a believer in God's love that says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. Never remember. The Bible is a picture, people, of both sides. We're going to have this or we're going to have that. In the beginning, for God, he was the God of all mankind. In the end, he's not the God of all mankind. In the end, and when God says, I am the God of all mankind, he means I got their back. All sin has been forgiven, Christ said, uh, aside from the unforgivable sin. Nothing to do with believing. It's always been about love alone. Those who love are born of God and know God because God is love. And we must be as little children, leave the land of the walking dead where our love has just become a noun. And where we have a form of godliness but deny the power of love. We've been seen through a glass darkly. Um, but now we can see clearly. The Lord in these days, he says, let your heart not be worried and troubled. He said, unless these days were cut short, no flesh could be saved. So there is a picture of what it would be if these days weren't cut short, which is the curse of Malachi. Zephaniah 1.1 1, 1 as well. And no birds, no fish, no mankind left alive on the planet. That is what is being cut short. So it will not have to happen because Scripture plainly says that there would be thermonuclear war and that the eyes would be consumed away in the book of Zechariah 14 uh, instantaneously. The tongues be consuming away in the mouth, the flesh consuming away before a skeleton would have the chance to hit the ash-covered ground. And so we see the kingdom age at one end the bible describes it and it will happen so you cannot have both you cannot have the destruction of the earth and eden ahead of us as it is written in the book of joel you're either going to have one or you're going to have the other you cannot have both one reality cancels out the other reality and therefore by the Lord relenting and reversing the curse, what is not going to happen is the depiction of Christ coming over the fields of Armageddon and uh, destroying everybody there. No, no, no. It will not be like that because that is what is being cut short. That reality does not have to happen. He's coming back in the sky, just as it is written in the book of Enoch. You see, the book of Enoch is if time is cut short, and we will know if it's cut short. And how we will know is whether World War Z lasts three and a half years. If it does not last three and a half years, then what will have happened is Four prophecies of four prophets will have come to pass. Thus saith the Lord God through Hildegard of Bremgen uh, in 1150 that the last king of the north, he would be assassinated. Thus saith the Lord God, I shall fight against Russia. Rasputin, Gregory the prophet, said that the cat, the beast, would chase the rats. The rats would become mice, and then the mice would eat the cat and be assassinated. Uh, by name, they named Putin 
um, the the prophet who is recently gone into uh, glory, Kim Clement, thus saith God, Putin will be assassinated. <laughs> it doesn't get more clear than that. And Daniel 11, the king of the north. And you got to understand that everyone except uh, Kim Clement uh, could not have known Vladimir Putin's name. They all identified him as the king of the north. And um, to where these writers were located, uh, and Rasputin talked his prophecy to the Russian people. So if he is assassinated, by my understanding of scripture, that is a big part of cutting time short because the instrumental aspect, uh, and by the way, if you read Daniel 11 and 12, first off, the king of the north invades, the king of the south loses, goes back to Moscow, comes back again, and then off to Armageddon, and it, it, it's clear as day. And that's exactly what's happening because Putin has lost initially. But the if you it, it, there was no chapter 11, chapter 10 back when Daniel wrote. Daniel 11 and Daniel 12 are the same chapter. Believe me, if you keep reading Daniel 11 into Daniel 12, and we are in those days of Daniel 12, you will see that this vision is for a time, times and a half a time, three and a half years. So if the assassination of Vladimir Putin, if it happens before that three and a half year uh, mark, Armageddon will not happen. That's good news. So and God says in the Bible, this will be considered in the latter days. It says so. It says that in the Bible. This will be considered in the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24. I will return my terrifying anger. Stop the fast rising great tribulation is what the Lord is saying. If my people will give me the Lord the desire of his heart for us to be one in love and to arise together. Um, the insanity of religiosity and religion, there's no love in that at all. It's empty, it's, 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 it's desolate. And the truth will set us all free if we will become a believer in love. For our beloved love, whose name is love, for our love so loved the world that he gave his only begotten love so whosoever would love like a child and walk with the spirit of love shall never be under any condemnation. And the Lord God says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your heart. And beyond that, no one will ever need to be taught of me. For all people of love shall know me from the least to the greatest, saith the Lord God Almighty. So here's the thing, people. If Putin is assassinated and time is cut short and the duration of the three and a half years of this war does not culminate in Armageddon, then Christ is not coming down over the fields of Armageddon. Then the other side of the coin will show to be true the depiction of the book of Enoch. And I'm, I'm going to be recording that hopefully next. And so all of our understandings are off. We're either going to have war and death or we're going to have no war and peace. You see, the Bible says that we will, by beating our sword into the uh, sickle for the harvest of love, we will come to the place where we will learn the ways of war no more, for it is truly obsolete. And for anyone that stands up for that, you know, it's 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 unforgiveness, and it's it's digging many graves is what it is for no reason at all. I mean, the the idea of you gotta have war in order to have peace that you lost when you went to war. That's just <laughs> bonzo. But the truth is, people, 
in the same way you cannot have prophecy coming to pass as you thought in the same way if you read Jonah 4 it says that God told Jonah go tell Nineveh you will be destroyed in 40 days that's it if you don't turn around that's it 40 days and what happened there 40 days went by they were not destroyed their hearts did change and our Lord God's mercy endureth forever and Jesus Christ himself would be lying if he were not to cut these days short so let your heart not be troubled he's making a way where there has seemed to be no way he's pulling down the mountains lifting up the valleys as it was in the beginning so shall it be at the end with all people being as it was in the beginning and you have to understand God is not a respecter of people. He loves everyone equally. If that was not so, his word would be a lie because it's stated that way many times. And the, the thing is, he has always loved all of us equally. And, you know, the, the, the truth is that if he threw one of us in hell that had our love alive, then guess what? He'd be a liar. Because he's saying, I will forgive your iniquities and never remember it. The Bible says all sin will be forgiven except the unforgivable sin, which is to let your love light go out. See, all the creation has been groaning with great expectation for the revelation of who the hell we are, of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands. Command you me, says the Lord God Almighty, to you and to you and to me and to all people that we have a right to know and I commanded him many years ago about 30 years ago and I was writing by a lamp that was never plugged in uh, the lamp of Zechariah 3 4 and 5 Zechariah 3 he picks an alcoholic Zechariah 4 he lights a lamp Zechariah 5 he sends forth the flying scroll Line by line, precept by precept, would the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, pulling down distortionalities. Because when the dust settles, we can see that you cannot have different uh, futures, or you're going to have one or the other. And we need to understand that the kingdom age is prophesied because that's the true reality. That is what is really going to happen. These are the days of the refiner's fire. Uh, the pain, the anguish, the emotional trauma, the utter devastation of hearts and minds and our flesh cringing in these days. Not only, only we got a double whammy, we got the trial of all flesh. Uh, Revelation 3 that's come bringing God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change. Nobody wants to change. And I have been ostracized and cut off from people on YouTube because no one wants to hear the truth that we have desolate heritages and the Bible predicted this in Isaiah 49, 8. Read it. It says so. <laughs> but hey, everybody wants to shoot the messenger. Oh, don't listen to that guy. The truth is, people, we are angels in the flesh. Jesus said that we are gods in John 10. And the Bible says we will be as the angels, neither male nor female. You want to know why? That's exactly what we are. We're not gods. We're gods with small g. We are the children of love. And that is our truest essence if we will not ball love in and hide it under a bushel barrel. And the, the truth is that as we come forth, and knowledge because God's people have always been destroyed for their lack of knowledge. The Bible says that the first is last and the last is first. We were created last because we were created higher with a higher glory than the angels before us. And the Bible says that the glory of his latter house, us, will be greater than that of the former, the former hosts. And he, the mystery of God is over people. He never uh, 
repentant of creating us. He always knew exactly how things would turn out. And he did it anyways because he's loved each and every one of us with all of his heart, with all of his passion, with all of his soul. And so in these days of Elijah, know that I am not the original Elijah. He is yet coming, the two witnesses. But if he comes, that's conditional. It does not have to be. If he comes, man, is there going to be death? But I am the other Elijah. You see, you got to look at Zechariah 3 and Revelation 11. To, vision of the candlestick, don't you know? But guess what? Nobody can count. <laughs> one plus one is two or one. See, in, in Zechariah, you got one candlestick. In uh, Revelation, you got two. Right there, it's a different vision, different people. In the vision of the two witnesses, the glory of, of the candlestick is the power of those two, which is because they've been resurrected, Moses and Elijah. I come in the spirit of Elijah, like uh, John the Baptist, no difference there. But in this vision of Zechariah, there's only one candle, and the power of the candle is not the power of uh, the servant, because they haven't been resurrected. And so there's been confusion, but it is foretold that an alcoholic would come forth. People don't want to hear it. But Genesis 49, 12, Shiloh. I thought it was Jesus all my life, but I, he was not, he did not have eyes that were red and dull of wine, people. That's what it says. Genesis 49, 12. And this Shiloh would have the scepter of all authority, this alcohol. You know, uh, they perverted the Bible in, in the original Hebrew. Um, it is written in Habakkuk 2 that this vision was written for the appointed time at the end, and it will come forth, it shall not lie. Behold, he whose soul is not upright, because nobody's soul is upright. Nobody, everybody's just a religious prude if they got their nose up in the air. It's time for the shattering of the power of the holy people so everybody can get along in the sandbox. Because here's the truth, people. We started with one God who was the God of all flesh. And that covenant, eternal covenant, I will be your God, you will be my people, apply to all people, not committing the unforgivable sin. He didn't kill all the people in Noah's days because he hated them. He has always been love. Uh, so that's another sermon. But the truest truth is that he has our back. So here, here it is in a nutshell. We have a, a false God in this world. Uh, billions of people want to believe this, and it's just not true. We started off with one God over all mankind, and then they twisted Jesus. And when they twisted Jesus, he did not become the Lord God of all mankind. Uh, he's the Lord God of the Christians. Everybody else uh, that doesn't believe he's love, he's going to burn them in hell forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. People, when you get saved, and you have the Holy Spirit come in you. Everybody has that same spark of the Holy Spirit because we're all children of His light of love, His love let it shine. And the truth is, there is no good man, no, not even one. So in Habakkuk 2, it was written, and the just will live by this guy's faith, Elijah, the Shiloh foretold in Genesis 49, 12, the alcoholic. The alcoholic writer of Zechariah 3, the pick and read it, speak an alcoholic, and uh, that is the writer of the flying scroll of Zechariah 5, the writer of uh, the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14. And Habakkuk says the vision is written plainly on the tablet, so all those who, who readeth it may run, who hear the words of my writing. And so the, the truth is, uh, they twisted Habakkuk, and they, you cannot even find the prophecy unless you look at the King James, stayed faithful to God's word, and so did um, 
the well the Hebrew Bible, but all the rest they made a prophecy disappear, and it just became a proverb because the people translating uh, could not believe that anybody could get anything good from somebody whose soul is not upright. My soul is not upright. I'm an alcoholic. I smoke THC for pain, spiritual or emotional. We're not always sure. Uh, but here's the thing. Jesus said, it doesn't matter what goes into you. It's what's coming out of you. The redemption of love has been my saving light, or I would have been dead many, many years ago. At 18, I had, uh, when the Lord called me, and I've heard his audible voice, I've had open-eyed visions. Um, when uh, when I was young, you know, a bag of glue glued to my mouth, passed out. I was uh, on a suicide uh, trip trying to happen or something. Just so insane, I did not care. I had an attitude, freaked the world. So love has redeemed me big time. And I preach to nobody because I love the people of the world. And nobody's watching me now, but someday, it's like I'm planting trees for shades for somebody that's going to enjoy sitting under the shade even after I'm gone, hopefully, if you two is still around. But here's the thing, people. To cut time short means a change. And Jesus said that unless these days were cut short, no flesh could be saved. And it is the, these are days exactly like the days of Noah. You see, if, if, if it's, it's got to get rid of Putin, he is crazy enough, he would push those red buttons. And what will happen is the Bible says all of mankind will have to go underground because it will be nuclear winter and the bottom line is no life can uh, survive. Uh, and that is what is ahead. And man, it's like some scary stuff. But do not be worried because God is promising faithfully and he will keep his promise. So please try to have the mind of Christ to believe and have faith in our Lord who is shining his light, shining his inspiration. Um, I'm going to sum up the kingdom age for you. What it is, this earth, we will learn the ways of war no more. There will be no more nuclear weapons on this planet. There will be no more prisons as they have been known. The world will have penal colonies all over the world, like Australia started. And these people will be building homes and repairing places that people will be able to live in free uh, for the rest of their lives if they so choose. Um, with technology the way it is, people need not to have uh, bars. Um, there will be security, and we're not going to be stupid about anything. But this will be a world of no more homelessness. This will be a world of no more hunger. No more billions of dollars being spent annually by, by, by countries. Uh, because everybody's going non-nuclear after what's about to happen. If, 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 man, um, I have never paid attention to any war. This World War Z is World War III. Daniel 7.5 says that the great Soviet bear would arise and in between, stuck between his fangs, foaming at the mouth with rabies uh, of death. <laughs> it would be chomping away on three ribs. Those ribs are Crimea, uh, Donetsk, and uh, Luhansk, if I'm pronouncing them right. The three pieces of uh, the Ukraine. And the worst part is the bear hears the voice saying, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. So please watch... Um, uh, scroll down, watch a video I did uh, a couple nights ago, Hildegard of uh, Bremgen in the year 1150 prophesied Russia's doom and Vladimir Putin's assassination with a thus saith the Lord God. And, you know, but uh, my materials, even though they would help the world tremendously, 
even though it's a psychological warfare attack against Russia, the people's uh, insanity of religion is blinding them to the usefulness of anything that I would have to offer this world. And I am the only, um, I am the only channel preaching the truth. Uh, there's been so many misunderstandings in, in the Word of God, and all I know is in the end, things are going to be glorious. When our Lord returns, it will be in glory. It will be as a victorious winner of love, because this world is going to bow unto love before we have to bow unto the, the graves ahead of us. And I hope. And all I could say is, be a believer in love, and love from love, hope from hope, peace from our Prince of Peace. Have faith in Him. That's so much love.